we see battles of darkness and light, and we see battles within each other, and we see battles between money and war. There is no battle. All there is is illusion. There's illusion of fear that we're going to lose something if we become realised of oneness. We're not going to lose anything when we become oneness. We're actually going to gain a lot for everybody. Because that's what you do when you share. You know, you share, more abundance comes your way. It multiplies. There, there isn't a lack. Of, there's only a lack because of the abuse that we're doing on the planet. There's only a certain amount of natural resources to use. So we have to realise that this is a, a finite situation. So we have to compromise. To be sustainable, there has to be a compromise. So we need to find the compromise by facing our fears. I was looking for a company for 21 years. It's really hard to be on public show all the time. I can't and imagine. Yeah, it could, I, I think that uh, it's amazing that people are absolutely staying here to do this. And it's amazing that they're bringing uh, this type of consciousness of, of uh, a proper, real democracy to the world. You know, that we can actually sit down together as human beings and sort this out. We don't have to give our power away all the time. I think there's still so much fear to actually let go and let people be really uh, a real democracy, a real freedom to come through and where the, the power is, because um, power corrupts absolutely, it needs to be taken out of individuals' hands because if they have full power it corrupts their minds because they, they have to cling on to the power, they feel like they have to fight to keep the power and while it's that situation there's a war going on and we need to stop that war and make real peace in the world. And real peace comes from understanding that we're all given life freely by God, or by the source of all existence, by this planet actually. We're given uh, total freedom to exist. There's no contract involved when we were born. We're given life with no contract. And then suddenly we have a contract, we have a birth certificate, we have a number, we're all registered, and we're actually owned by the government to a certain extent. And I think this really has to change, so we have to realise that we are free. We are free on this planet. And actually, uh, the way we're farming food, actually, uh, means that at the moment the meat industry is using so much land where if we were growing vegetables, if we were growing sustainably, if we were growing permaculturally, we would be able to sustain much more people. Because it's, you know, we're at 7 billion now, and it's very soon we're going to be 9 billion people on this planet. And we really need to get our act together. And a lot of people, because they're doing their mass through uh, traditional farming techniques, which means growing meat, mostly, They've got the numbers wrong. They think that this planet can only sustain a certain amount of people. And it's not true. We can sustain on this planet huge amounts of people because the land's not being used properly. The land's owned by certain individuals. It's not being opened up for the real use. Actually, this is the planet of love. We're standing on the planet of love. This is Eden, if we want it to be. But uh, people are still holding on, it's my land, this is my situation. It's not. People killed for that land. But do you think it's possible to change it? Is it possible to, to reverse the situation and then get the land back to the people? Do you think that's, that's where we were moving forwards to now? But yeah. is that possible in a real way? Is it possible to get it? Yeah. I think it has to, it has to come this way. No. The other option is uh, disaster and pain and misery um, and that, that's the way the economic thing is falling, it's all the debt is going to the poor. 
the actual poor are going to pay this debt. It's not the rich who are going to pay this debt. If the bankers who've created it aren't going to pay this debt. It's all going to the poor. And uh, we have to realise that we have to give these people a chance to be sustainable. Instead of giving benefits like we are now, we should be giving people land and the ability to grow their own food. Because if we started to have that way of thinking now, we would be prepared for anything in the future because it would have a sustainability. That's great. Like a coffee, coffee point. Yeah, I mean, basically, since uh, since we started, we have unfortunately been using generators uh, simply because that's like the only practical solution that we could find short term with the money that we had. Uh, we have been working towards green energy solutions. In fact, um, probably coming from this Monday, we're going to have. Well, that's, is that in fact tomorrow? Uh, either Monday or Tuesday, we will be having. Um, five or six large 210 watt solar panels uh, and charge controllers for uh, charging 12 volt batteries uh, then we're tending as much as possible to be running most of our camp from these. Uh, there's been a bit, bit of issue over that because that some people have more faith than others in the fact that this will work uh, and that, that's, that's caused contention over, over the last few weeks. Uh, but actually we're spending a lot of our money, a lot of our donations are going directly on generator fuel. So this is uh, it's not an ideal situation. So but generally police were quiet, they did not really interfere with you? Yeah, no, in general they've been amazing. Mm. Because all the footage we saw on, on, on the internet, they would just stand there but say nothing or do nothing, you know. And even people trying to talk to them, they would be just like, you know, the wall. <laughs> not really, yeah. That's good. It doesn't seem a single one at the moment. This is the Occupy Starbucks logo, um, which, which might potentially find its way onto some mugs um, and slipped into the, into the Starbucks. I made this because somehow we, uh, as a camp, have become inextricably linked with Starbucks, being that they are literally the closest shop to us. And they've been very accommodating, actually. They've, uh, they've not really had an issue with us being here. Occupy London. No thanks, greedy banks are anonymous. Anonymous. I can't think of the picture. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, support the cause, one pound each. Yeah, all right. Brilliant. I'm sorry about that, but MI5 will put it on my passport that I'm, an, I'm a terrorist. No thanks, greedy banks. Thank that, you. That's for sure. Now, I'll give you an instance. When I went for a bank loan for my badge business, they offered me 50,000 pounds. I only wanted five to set up an office. Also, I feel like uh, a lot of people are seriously afraid. Of and uh, you know, when an animal, we are animals essentially. When an animal is afraid, they're dangerous. And I think it's like this at the moment. I think uh, a lot of the, the system are uh, quite happy with the separation and the way it is. And uh, they're quite happy for the, the poor to pay all the debts. And uh, they, they don't want any other situation. But we have to keep uh, reflecting the light to them and saying, you are human too, we are all human. Like, we're not in... Uh, separation, we are breathing the same air and we're drinking the same water, but we need to share this. And if we don't share it, it's going to go that way where there's a lot of misery, pain and death. And we just, if we don't want that, we can have either paradise or hell. We choose hell. We choose to turn this planet into pure hell. That's okay, you know, the planet's going to be fine, it's just the human race is going to suffer. You know, the planet's going to go on anyway. 
if we choose to create paradise and share and plant fruit trees and plant edible food and share and take the fences down and understand that we need to share the space then we, we can have pure paradise it's really up to us and where we want to go prove to people that uh, sustainability does work. People don't believe it to be working so we have to show examples that it works for them to understand that it's possible at this point. Uh, it would be really nice for big business to come in and uh, start to understand this and even see that it's actual, actually um, as zero growth or like um, uh, an organization, a non-profit organization situation can still run, everyone can still get paid, everyone can still carry on, it's just that we changed uh, from paying the, the stocks and shareholders the money, we're plowing it back into the sustainable business and creating a new way. And it's only a matter of time before this starts to, to happen. And the problem is you get leaders, and even a group like this, you're still getting people that are coming to the top and becoming leaders. It's ingrained in our animal nature to uh, allow people to take our power. And it's for us as human beings to learn that we have to stand in our own power. So there's no leaders for us. We have to be our own leaders as individuals and come together for a real democracy, real truth and not just give the power over to someone else and accept that they're doing it. It doesn't work. The only way this works is that we all stand in our power.